this week I have definitely been busting out some stuff for you guys. Um, I started blogging again, so today we're going to discuss some things that you can look for when you're going out to buy a car. Um, a lot of times I get clients who, you know, people get repossessions and they turn in cars because the cars are messed up. And the reality is, as harsh as this may sound, the dealership doesn't care that you bought a lemon. Um, three things that you can do to make sure that you're making a better purchase is don't impulsively purchase a car, research it before you buy it. Get a Carfax report. Your Carfax report isn't a guarantee that the car is going to be excellent, but it is definitely a tool to help you have a better understanding of the vehicle that you are getting. It does check the titles. If the title is clean, it'll let you know. If the title was totaled, it'll let you know. It'll let you know if it was in a flood. Um, it'll let you know all those sorts of things. So those are things that you want to do. Another thing is, is you can purchase a car warranty. A car warranty is something that most reputable car dealers will offer when they sell you the car. But if they don't, then you can negotiate it. Negotiate it into your deal. And if you can't, then you can always buy one after you purchase the car. Um, be mindful that if you are going to try to get a warranty, that in most cases, the warranty is going to be contingent on the age of the car and the condition of the car, just like it would be if you were buying one for a home. Um, lastly, this is a recommendation that my older cousin um, told me because, you know, she has bought cars. I've bought cars before, too. I've never had to put any money down because it's all about how you negotiate. And we can talk about that at a later date. But find the car that you want at three different locations and research each one. And then take into account the cost, the features, and, um, you know, mileage and things like that, the condition of the car. And then out of the three, you know, when you test drive them, test drive them during the day. Look underneath the car. So look under the car make sure there's not any rusting or things like that so there are things that you can do to take precaution to make sure that you're not buying a lemon if you feel like that you have bought a lemon contact your attorney general's office place an issue or a complaint with the better business bureau place a complaint with the bureau of consumer financial protection you know what i mean make a fuss make a stink call your ag see if your state has lemon laws if you have poor credit then you are going to be a person that is more likely to buy a lemon. Why, Shannon? Why do you say that? I say that because it's true. So when you go to the car dealer, car dealers buy their cars from auctions. If a car dealer determines that the repairs that are within the car, you know, they'll do the repairs up to a certain extent, but they want to make sure they're getting their money back. It's just like anybody else who's doing an investment. So if for some reason the repairs exceed what they want to do, then they'll send it back to auction or else they'll sell it to another car dealership. Usually those car dealerships are going to be like your mom and pops are going to be like not as popular. And I'm not saying that because the car is absolutely bad or absolutely trash. They're doing that because, you know, when you're starting up, you're not going to start at Porsche level. Not everybody. They'll buy those cars and then they'll do the repairs that they can. And then they'll go from there, which is why when you go to most mom and pop places, they're going to have older cars. That's how people end up financing 2010 cars um, for $450 a month. Well, they're... they're Aiming at you if you have credit below fare. Um, subprime lenders uh, traditionally loan towards people who have high delinquency. You're going to have high interest rates. You're going to have higher payments. You're going to have just overall, it's just not going to benefit you as well as you would like. And um, specifically, you are going to have excessive fees, payments, and interest rates. I had a client where she was paying extra towards her car. Well, when she was paying extra, they weren't actually applying it to the principal. So if you're paying extra on your car and you're not specifying that you want to pay it towards the principal, she was just paying extra money for interest. It was a smack in the face, punch in the throat. <laughs> you know, she's, I mean, busting down thousands every tax term and, you know, nothing to show for it other than paid interest. So... Anyway, um, that's today's lesson on car buying. So if you're going to buy a car, you want to make sure that you research the car so you're not impulsively purchasing. You get your car facts report because it will tell you about the title of the car. Um, you're going to want to make sure that, you know, you get a comparison of three cars. And if you don't have a specific type of car that you're looking for, don't seem too eager. An eager person is a salesperson's wet dream. I know that sounds, it's the truth. 
If you are eager, I the salesperson doesn't have to do anything. All they have to do is just feed on your desire to have what you want. All the salespeople are probably like, shut up, Shannon. It's the truth. Feed on the desire of what you want. So don't be too eager, even if you love it. Go in and just be like, mm-hmm, this is nice. I'm going to think about it overnight. They're not going to sell that car overnight. And if they do, it wasn't meant for you. It's just something to think about. I'm just saying. So I hope you found value in this video. If you did, please comment, like, subscribe, turn on the bell. And, you know, share this with your friends. Um, I feel like educated consumers make better decisions. I enjoy sharing what I know. I don't know it all. So I am open to learn. And until next time, thanks.